Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Sasan announced a big jump in the cost estimate for its Lake Charles Chemicals project, which is being built in the US. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the development and what it means for the group. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Did this latest increase come as a surprise? Yes, I think it came as a massive surprise and an unhappy one at that. Um, only in February we had a revision to the cost estimate, the cost of completion of this project, which is very well down the, the track now. Um, and that was around 11.6 billion, was the sort of 11.8 billion dollars, not rand, dollars, for completing this large uh, project in, in the Louis state of Louisiana in the south of the U.S. And uh, only a few months later, there's now been a, a massive upward revision by between $1 billion and $1.3 billion to complete this project. And I think we saw immediate uh, unhappiness, uh, bad reaction from the market. Um, I think the share price at one stage was 15% down. Uh, and I think it's really a feeling that, you know, what has happened? Uh, why uh, this late in the project has the estimate had to be revised? Uh, so dramatically. And it's come down to sort of two elements, it seems. The one element being that uh, the project management team uh, seemed to get a lot of the figures wrong or didn't communicate these transparently throughout the group. Uh, um, and that accounts for about half of the, the increase. Plus, there's some new elements that have now been uh, included, uh, as well as uh, feeling that a, that a $300 million contingency was, re it was needed. To, so that they've got some wriggle room in future so that there's not going to be another upward adjustment. You must understand this project started out with a capital price tag of $8.9 billion back in 2014. So this has been a, a, a dramatic increase uh, and uh, one that the, the market is not taking well. Uh, and it's a massive project for Sassel. So you know all attention has had to be, be on this project because it's a game changer. It's basically almost building another secunda out in Louisiana. And we know how large that complex, obviously a very different technology based on gas, uh, not a coal to liquids project, but it's a massive new complex in, in Sassel's life. And it changes uh, uh, the game for Sassel. Why is the project so important to Sassel? Well, really it shifts Sassel from being this coal to link liquids behemoth. And now that was a sort of accident of history. Uh, it really was uh, South African apartheid, South Africa's response to sanctions and trying to be uh, oil independent. So uh, South Africa's got a massive um, uh, investment in converting coal uh, into liquid fuels. It's, uh, it's a unique sort of proposition in the world. And uh, th that's been fairly successful uh, for South Africa. About a third of our liquid fuels comes from coal. But it comes with the downside of the uh, in the new era of uh, climate change and environmental consequences from burning coal. Uh, it's a very large uh, carbon dioxide emission uh, site in, in Secunda and Sasselberg. We've seen a transition to gas to liquids, uh, more and more gas coming into the system, which is a little bit cleaner for Sassel. But over the years, um, Sassel tried to uh, globalize the coal to liquids technology. They were looking at a number of places with a lot of attention being paid to India and China at one stage and possibly another uh, coal to liquids uh, foot, uh, campus in the north of South Africa. All that has now just been decided strategically that that will not be the future of Sassel. And also ca gas to liquids, which they did commercialize um, in the Middle East, Again, a project that was outside of South, uh, South Africa. Again, a project that faced uh, schedule overruns and cost overruns. Whereas Sassel, uh, its pedigree in South Africa has been one of fairly tight capital cost management. So these two international uh, uh, export, export of their technologies have, have faced these hurdles uh, in terms of project management. But even there, uh, there's a view that gas to liquids won't be the future for Sassel. So really, this project is about transitioning Sassel from being an energy company based on coal to liquids and gas to liquids producing liquid fuels uh, to a more of a chemicals company. So once uh, the, this LCCP project is completed, about 70% of Sassel's revenues will be coming from chemicals. And uh, the future is more and more specialty chemicals rather than bulk chemicals. 
So this is a massive change uh, in the architecture of Sassel, and this project is the, uh, the key to unlocking that new architecture. And it is amazing, therefore, that uh, we've seen such uh, poor project management, uh, especially on the capital cost side. What's next for the group? Well, I think it's continuing with this, this strategy. Obviously, the internal rates of return for the project are going to be different. One, because of the capital cost overruns, as well as uh, change, I suppose, in the, the short-term or medium-term outlook for chemicals and that are, that are going to be produced here. So there's been a downward revision to the internal rate of return from this project. Sassel stresses that it has the uh, uh, balance sheet that is robust enough to absorb these increases. But it's going to go into a gearing phase now this year of nearly 50%, which is very high for the group. So there's going to need to be a clawing, a deleveraging of its balance sheet, I think, as a major focus once this project starts to ramp down. And part of that deleveraging process is a focus now on cleaning up the structure in terms of the new strategy, which I said is going to be more about specialty chemicals, less about coal to liquids, gas to liquids, less about energy, more about chemicals, less about bulk chemicals, and more about specialty chemicals. So we're going to see an asset disposal program. Now, over the last year, sassel has been reviewing its uh, portfolio of assets. They've done it in a sort of uh, group of about 100 assets or clusters of assets. And they've now come to a decision that they can dispose of assets to the tune of about $2 billion. Now, Sassel hasn't disclosed the identity of these projects, but we do know from their strategy that refineries are no longer on their oil refineries, are no longer on their radar. And we know they do have an oil refinery in partnership with Total in the Free State. So that's a possible asset that comes up for disposal. But we read don't have visibility yet of the the full suite of assets that are going to be sold by Sassel over the coming months, probably 18 months or two, year, two, two, two years um, or longer, that they're going to be disposing uh, these, uh, uh, these non-core assets. But we know what their focus areas are in terms of geography. It's going to be the US, Louisiana, it's going to be South Africa, and it's going to be Mozambique and some oil interests offshore West Africa. So I think, the, but within South Africa, the, and uh, in probably the European assets, there's going to be a disposal process that, uh, that uh, now takes place. And the proceeds, are, as I said, I think are going to be very much about bringing down the high levels of debt on, on Sassel's balance sheet and uh, managing that uh, down uh, in, a, in a responsible way, in a way that's going to recover their credibility in the market, I think, which I think at the moment is at a, at a, at a low ebb. And I think there might even be a point where I think this, there's going to be one, some sort of action, some visible action, some consequences uh, for those involved. We have been told already that the, the project management team has been restructured uh, at uh, the Louisiana site itself. And the, the head of chemicals, Fleetwood Krubler, is now having direct oversight. So there's a, a sort of a more direct involvement. But I still think there's a lot of unhappiness and probably some way to go before the market feels that this leadership team is credible again. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.